The United States Space Force USSF is a proposed branch of the United States Armed Forces, which is intended to have control over military operations in outer space. Rationale According to a report prepared by the Center for Strategic and International Studies, they identified three major organizational issues with space, identified by a number of studies and congressional commissions, that would be addressed by a space force. <laughs> Split acquisitions responsibility The responsibility for space acquisitions is fragmented between approximately 60 different organizations within the Department of Defense and Intelligence Community. Within the military services, approximately 80% of the space budget is invested in the Air Force, but other components are located within the Army and Navy, including satellites and space personnel. Moreover it is reported that the classified military intelligence space budget of the National Reconnaissance Office and other intelligence agencies may rival that of the Air Force. This split of acquisitions and budgetary authorities between 60 different organizations results in no organization having overall authority or leadership for space, which results in slower decision-making, uncoordinated acquisitions efforts, and a lack of accountability for over-budget or over-scheduled programs. Topic. Split space workforce. Space personnel, much like space acquisitions, are scattered across the military and intelligence community, with too small a number of individuals to create a viable career track for space professionals. This is compounded by the common movement of personnel in and out of space billets every few years, which prevents individuals from becoming familiar with the space domain. The traditional role of a military service is to organize individuals into domain-focused communities to develop domain-focused doctrine, strategy, and policies. This is done by the Army for land domain, the Navy for the maritime domain, and the Air Force for the air domain. The current services organize personnel and doctrine around their respective domains. Currently there is no such organization for space, which leaves the domain split and unstable. Topic. Current military services conflict of interest on space The current military services, the Army, Marine Corps, Navy, Air Force, and Coast Guard, are all organized and aligned primarily to prosecute war in their native domains of the land, maritime, and air, with space being seen as a secondary support function. This conflict of interest has stymied the growth of space professionals. For instance the Air Force has long been vocal about the fact that the other services place requirements upon the space systems that the Air Force operates without providing any of the funding. It, however, does not take this approach to air assets that support the other services. When the military services are forced to choose between space and their primary domain, it has historically been proven that they always chose their primary domain, whether it be the land, maritime, or air. For instance, between FY 2010 and 2014, the Air Force budget for aircraft and space systems both decreased by one-third, but when the budget began to rise again, aircraft procurement rose by 50%, while space procurement continued to decline by another 17% in an environment of rising budgets. It has been noted that the most powerful institutions in national security are the military services, yet there is no military service dedicated to promote and fight for space. Topic. Proposed organization According to a Department of Defense proposal, the Space Force would absorb Air Force Space Command, the Army's 1st Space Brigade, the Navy's Space and Naval Warfare Systems Command and Naval Satellite Operations Center. The National Reconnaissance Office would not be immediately merged in, although integration would gradually occur. Installations and facilities would remain within their current services until the Space Force achieves an appropriate operating capability. 
The missions of the Space Force would include space situational advantage, battle management command and control of space forces, space lift and range operations, space support to nuclear command and control, missile warning, satellite communications and position, navigation and timing. Other missions that are tangentially associated with space, such as nuclear intercontinental ballistic missiles, cyber operations and the total missile defense missions, would not immediately be integrated into the Space Force. The proposal also calls for the creation of a Secretary of the Space Force and Chief of Staff of the Space Force, who will be a sitting member of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. The proposal also discussed the creation of a Space Force Reserve and Space National Guard. Topic History Topic Two thousand and one Space Commission In response to a congressional mandate, Donald Rumsfeld chaired a commission composed of a number of space, military, and intelligence professionals to analyze and recommend how the United States organized its national security space assets. The report stated that the U.S. needed to transform its military capabilities by developing doctrine, concepts of operations, and capabilities, to include the development and deployment of space-based weapons systems to defend space assets and augment land, air, and maritime forces. It also stated that the U.S. needed to strengthen its space-based intelligence capabilities, actively shape the international legal and regulatory environment for space, advance American space technology, and create and sustain a cadre of military space professionals, both civilian and military. With regard to the Air Force, which at the time held 85% of the military space budget, the Commission concluded that, although official doctrine calls for the integration of air and space operations, the Air Force treats space merely as a secondary support arm to its air mission. The Commission recommenced that the Air Force take steps to create a space culture within the service, to include new space systems concepts, doctrine, and operational capabilities. The Commission also recognized that the intelligence community was not properly able to interface with the Defense Department regarding space matters. To address these concerns the Commission recommended in the mid-term creating a space corps within the Department of the Air Force, and in the long term a separate military department for space. It also recommended merging Air Force and National Reconnaissance Office space programs, amending USC Title X to give the Air Force responsibility, in the short term, for air and space operations. Topic: 2017 Space Corps proposal. In 2017, the United States Space Corps was bipartisan proposal by Republican Representative Mike Rogers and Democratic Representative Jim Cooper as separate service within the Department of the Air Force, with its head as a member of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. This concept would have been similar how the United States Marine Corps is a separate service within the Department of the Navy. This proposal was put forward to separate space professionals from the Air Force to give space a greater cultural focus and help develop a leaner and faster space acquisition system. This was done, in part, due to the concern that the space mission had become subordinate to the Air Force primary air dominance mission. Representative Rogers also stated that this new Space Corps would have helped create a better career path for space professionals, noting that in 2016 none of the 37 Air Force colonels selected for promotion to Brigadier General were space officers and that only two of the 450 hours of Air Force professional military education were dedicated to national security space. Ultimately the proposal passed the House of Representatives, but was cut from the 2018 National Defense Authorization Act while reconciling the House and Senate bills. Instead, the 2018 NDAA boosted the position of Air Force Space Command by extending the term of its commander to six years, and making it the sole command for all Air Force Space Forces and the DOD was required to conduct a study of how it organized military space. Topic. Space Force proposal 
President Donald Trump first suggested a space force during a speech in March 2018. We're doing a tremendous amount of work in space, I said, maybe we need a new force. We'll call it the Space Force. In a meeting with the newly revived National Space Council, he signed Space Policy Directive 3 SPD3 on June 18, which implements a framework for space traffic management. A widely reported development from the meeting was his call for a Space Force, which is not mentioned in SPD3. Before signing it, he directed the DOD and the Pentagon to immediately begin the process necessary to establish a space force as the sixth branch of the armed forces. That would be separate but equal from the Air Force. He asked General Joseph Dunford, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, to undertake that assignment. The president announced this proposal, in part, due to his feeling that the Dodd had been spurning his earlier public suggestions to create a space force. The Dodd was surprised by his announcement. According to Congressman Mike Rogers, a proponent of the Space Corps proposal, Trump made the surprise announcement on national TV to silence opponents of the measure within the White House and the military. The current proposal is supported by current NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine, who has stated that it is critical to defending the United States energy grid and GPS network. Other supporters include former Air Force Colonel and Astronaut Buzz Aldrin, former Air Force Colonel and Astronaut Terry Verts, former Marine Corps Colonel and Astronaut Jack R. Luzma, former Astronaut David Wolfe, former Astronaut Clayton Anderson, space mogul Elon Musk, and astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson. Neil deGrasse Tyson has stated that a space force, in addition to war fighting responsibilities, should have the roles of space debris cleanup and asteroid defense. Defense Secretary Mattis, a critic of a Space Corps proposal in 2017, has stated space is becoming a contested war fighting domain, and we have to adapt to that reality. Former Air Force Secretary Deborah Lee James opposed an independent space arm, believing that since it would be the smallest armed service ever created, it would be detrimental to space operations, and instead supports the re-establishment of a unified combatant command for space. Similarly, Michael O'Hanlon of the Brookings Institution has argued that air and space operations need to be closely linked and it is unclear how separating them will be more effective in protecting satellites. Congress directed two studies to examine the viability of a space force, the first is due in August 2018 and the second is due in December 2018. According to Rogers, the first study assesses to what extent a space force would be necessary, while the second one examines its nature, implementation, and costs. On July 18, it was reported that the Dodd was putting its final touches on the first report according to Air Force Chief General David Goldfein. The Center for Naval Analyses was hired to conduct the second report, which was ordered to provide more specifics. On how to pave the way for the creation of a space force, Vice President Mike Pence in August 2018 announced a plan that would establish the space force by 2020. On August 13, 2018, President Trump signed into law the John S. McCain National Defense Authorization Act for fiscal year 2019, Public Law No. 115-232. It includes the re-establishment of the U.S. Space Command by the end of 2018. U.S. Space Command will be led by a four-star general or admiral and will temporarily be a sub-unified combatant command under U.S. Strategic Command, until it can be separated as a full unified combatant command. Secretary of the Air Force Heather Wilson, an early opponent of the Space Corps proposal, stated in September 2018 that she is now in full alignment on a Space Force, with the condition that it must be done right and with no half measures. She also announced that it would be a full service, with the Department of the Space Force as its military department, which she stated must have full responsibility for acquisitions, just as she has with the Department of the Air Force. At the Air Force Association's Air, Space, and Cyber Conference Secretary Wilson proposed a detailed plan for a future Space Force, with its own department and secretariat. The initial size of this force would be 13,000 people and would cost $13 billion over five years. 
Aside from absorbing the space activities of the Air Force, it would also absorb the space activities of the Army, Navy, Missile Defense Agency, Strategic Capabilities Office, NASA, NOAA, and the U.S. Department of Commerce. It would also maintain an extremely close relationship with the National Reconnaissance Office. Defense budget analyst Todd Harrison has declared these figures to be inflated and unreliable, however. Harrison says the 13,000 additional people is unrealistic, stating that Wilson should have recommended to use existing personnel. A billion dollar construction project for U.S. Space Command is also unnecessary, according to Harrison. The Pentagon has numerous buildings that could be repurposed for a much lower cost. Despite Wilson's claim that $13 billion is conservative, Harrison argues that the same figure is a very high estimate. Topic. Alternate proposals Topic. United States Aerospace Force The Air Force Association has come out strongly against the proposal, stating that air and space are indivisible. Rather, they propose merging the current Air and Space Forces of the United States into the United States Aerospace Force, to better reflect the reality of air and space operations. In part this is also due to the large cost of setting up a separate space force and the lack of arms in space. Former NASA Assistant Administrator Bill Bruner has also come out in support of this proposal, stating that integration is always better than stove piping military operations. He also proposed, within this new aerospace force, combining Air Combat Command and Air Force Space Command into one Aerospace Combat Command. This is in large part due to the doctrinal similarities between air and space operations. Topic. See also Militarization of space Space Force United States Space Command Air Force Space Command Strategic Defense Initiative